Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. I'm opening. We have an eye, sort of a nostril, two teeth. One of the teeth has a small cavity. Close call, folks, but I think we got here just in time. Presented by Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. This is Anatomy of a Movie. In-depth discussions and breakdowns of various movie titles. And now that you've seen the movie, let the dissection begin. Party. Welcome to Popcorn Talks Anatomy of a Movie, where today we're going to knock out uh, <laughs> Southpaw. Uh, I'm, I'm here with a very awesome, great, um, it's, a, it's an honor to be with this panel today. I got Marissa in the far right. Hello, everyone. I, I have uh, Steve in the, uh, uh, right next to Marissa. Hey, everybody. Steve Kaufman here. And we worked, uh, he, he was here for Entourage. Yes. We have a newcomer. Welcome. Hi, Welcome. Matt Ritter. Matt. How are you doing? And we have James working the ones and twos in the board today. And as I said earlier today, we are going to be knocking out Southpaw. Uh, this is the latest uh, from Anton Fuqua, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. So why don't we start, as we always do, with uh, first impressions of the movie. We'll start off uh, with you, Marissa. Um, I've thoroughly enjoy this film overall i mean we know there's a lot of boxing films that have been made so tonight it's a nice dramatic boxing film watching it i mean i personally and i'll just preface this i am a humongous rocky fan so while going into this film i saw so many rocky references that could be odes or mm. unnecessary ties back to rocky <laughs> but watching this all i think kept thinking was Rocky. But I love Rocky so much that I did enjoy this film. Fair enough. Um, I was one of the few people who watched this film without seeing a trailer first. Interesting. Yeah. So Rachel McAdams, and we'll get to that part, pretty much floored me emotionally. Interesting. Like wrecked so me emotionally because I thought I was literally just seeing Rocky. And she was going to be she was going to be Adrian and this movie was just going to keep going. Like you he's going to come down and then come back up and then like what? That's a fascinating point because we'll talk about trailering and marketing. There's been a lot being said, particularly this this summer, about how trailers quote unquote spoil movies. I want to know how did you get escape seeing any marketing on this movie? Well, I saw the honestly all I saw was Monday Night Raw. Okay. They pay, they obviously <clears throat> paid for marketing because they did a special on just Jake Gyllenhaal, all the work Jake Gyllenhaal did to become a boxer for this role. And that was enough to sell me. Where I was gotcha. like, boxing movie, Jake Gyllenhaal, who does these transformations as yeah. an actor. You, you know, what's interesting is I also did not see the trailer, too. I don't know how. <laughs> I think it's summertime. I think sometimes, you know, during the summer, you're just more busy and you're just not sitting around as much. But I happen to have seen the movie this morning in an empty theater, which I think also uh, colors your initial reaction yeah. mm -hmm. to a movie. I connected a lot in the moment with the movie. I'm sitting there alone, almost crying in the theater. <laughs> I think I'm a little more vulnerable. I was alone at the 9.30 a.m. showing of a pretty emotional movie. Isn't it? Um, when, when you are in a movie theater in that capacity, don't you sort of kind of like, you feel sort of kind of like, hey, this is my living room. Yeah, and, and if somebody walks that. in, you're like, get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, no, there was one guy who, like, checked in. I was like, oh, man, my oh, pants man. are not <laughs> yeah. buttons are kind of unbuttoned. I'm kind of a mess. Right? All right, I, so, saw, but, I saw Ant-Man like that last week. Yeah. <laughs> it was just me and a, it was a friend and I. We just got off a job, and no one else was in the theater. Yeah. So, and we just talked about it. But I have to ask, like, again, but you escaped seeing any trailers. You go to a lot of movies, I, I tell you, you see, yeah. and you didn't see this trailer. So this is my first movie I've been to this summer. I've been so busy traveling oh, and whatnot. And I think that's why. That's gotta be why, okay. because I'm yeah. sure I would have seen it on any movie this Marissa, summer. Marissa, you saw a trailer for this. I definitely saw um, the trailer. I'm, I'm a big fan of Jake Gyllenhaal <clears throat> and Rachel McAdams for both their works and their careers individually. And so they have a big enough repertoire that brought me to this film, plus Boxing, just watching the trailer, I got a lot of Rocky references too. And sure. again, I won't keep repeating myself. Right. That brought me to this film. So I I knew going into it, it was going to be a nice dramatic sports related, family drama related film. Interesting. We all, um, I want to talk a little, yeah, for, for me, um, I did see the trailer. Um, and 
It was interesting. Uh, and like I said, we'll talk trailers a little bit, but I knew of the Rachel McAdams the spoiler, mm-hmm. let's say. And, I, you know, my, my first gut reaction to that was, oh, Jesus, why are they telling me that she dies? And then I realized because the movie is really not about their relationship. It's, it's, a, it's a father-daughter relationship. Mm-hmm. So I was sort of okay with that. Although, after listening, you, you two had completely different experiences than what I had. And my experience was, in all honesty, this is one of my bigger disappointments this summer. Ooh. I felt that it was, I thought we had excellent performances. Mm. strong performances throughout <clears throat> however they were stuck to me in a quagmire of trite plotting mm-hmm. and dangling subplots mm-hmm. and and it lacked for me it lacked uh, an emotional heft that would have brought me to the stand up and cheer mm-hmm. moment mm-hmm. like in a Rocky movie it, as, as hard as Fuqua and team tried to, to manipulate me to go that way there was never a point where i just like said yeah Mm -hmm. like i I never felt there was any comeuppance at all for the quote-unquote villain um and uh yeah i was i was i was really just i walked out going yeah it didn't really have the emotional punch pardon the pun Mm -hmm. that that i had hoped it would in sports movies not just boxing movies Mm -hmm. i kept on throwing back to mcfarland a movie that i talked about much earlier this year yeah and that movie i got very emotional and that's a that's a sports movie about running Mm -hmm. like how do you make running exciting boxing is exciting i felt that the boxing scenes were filmed great but then i like you marissa was thinking rocky a lot Mm -hmm. and in rocky i was so engaged in the boxing match uh, that this one they were good that he tried to be but just he could not be John G. Avilton or even Stallone for that yeah, matter. And, and let me be clear I, I, I was we were talking about our initial reactions once we get into it I will say I'm closer to where you stand than where I was alone in the theater really I knew I was sort of being manipulated <laughs> You know, but it's like when when his daughter slaps him, like I feel something. You that, know what I mean? But it's, it's, and I throw that to performance. Yeah, like yeah, she yeah. was. We'll talk performance, but she was amazing. Yeah, I oh. thought she was great. But yes, that, that it was it was lacking in many many ways. It's yeah, very. I think, I think one of my biggest problems with this film was pacing. Mm-hmm. There were some scenes that last really long, and some where I felt like we just cut to the chase, and some that could have been longer. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, we'll definitely get. And I think on pace, I think on pacing, it's also on a macro level too that it, there are some <laughs> things that should deserve right. like half the movie, and then get nothing. And then there are some things yeah. that are like a training montage that yeah. like, no, no, that's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. We're gonna talk music too because yeah. I really thought that that was another. There should have been. I wanted more James Horner. I wanted more James yeah. Oh, yeah. Horner right. than. It, no offense. I wanted more James than Eminem. I wanted more orchestral. You know, because that in a good sports movie too, I think helps manipulate an audience into mm-hmm. a to to an exciting fervor. Oh yeah. Um. You know. So, but before we really dive into story, I want to talk. Why don't we start off with the genesis of this project? Because this is something that has been gestating for some time Mm. Mm -hmm. and we were talking about this just before we came in here Uh, and Marissa I know you always have a wealth of information Uh, well I'm going to throw it out there at first this was to be this was meant to be an Eminem project (laughs) yes I'm laughing I'm just (laughs) laughing because I'm just seeing how jacked Jake Gyllenhaal was (laughs) oh yeah Just just the idea of I don't know how much Eminem weighs or his stature but like just the thought of him makes rock it makes Sylvester Stallone seem huge. Yeah, yeah you know. and, and, <laughs> and 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 uh, like I was like thinking, going, you know, he may have gone through the transformation because I don't doubt Eminem's like perseverance. Like I don't, uh, um, I'm not gonna take away from from his attitude and what he would like he would push yeah. for. But let's just face it, though. I mean, Eminem ain't Jake Gyllenhaal. No. Yeah, I mean he's right. not eventually an but, not like Jake is. Yeah, no. But so. to add to that, yes, it was based off of Eminem kind of wanting to tell the second half of Eminem's life. Yeah. you know, going through down ships, losing money, almost losing mm-hmm. the custody of his daughter. So and losing a friend, um, the, that gestation of the uh, story. But also, we know Jake Gyllenhaal can deliver a solid dramatic performance. And we haven't we know Eminem as a musician, not an actor. So if Eminem were to be Billy Hope, I don't think he could have delivered the most dramatic scenes that Jake definitely delivered in Even as film. good as he was 
an eight mile. I, I agree. I mean, I think it would have lessened the stature of this movie. And and again, because I had seen the trailer, one of the things in the trailer, there's a they they showed the opening scene of this movie, which is that thing of Jake Gyllenhaal, like yeah, and the camera yeah. pulls mm -hmm. back. Probably my favorite scene in the mm. movie. I just loved, it. but that the, there's a snippet of that in the trailer, and no, you know, just seeing Jake Gyllenhaal's career and his transformations, especially his last three movies, from say The Prisoners to 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 Nightcrawler mm -hmm. to this movie, you just know you're gonna get this intense performance, mm. and I'm like, oh man, this is this looks really good. <laughs> I can't see Eminem carrying this I, off. I, I would yeah. go so far as to say that Jake Gyllenhaal salvaged. This movie. Huh? Uh, I, I mean, yeah. I, I just don't I would see argue how. it was a different movie on paper when Eminem was attached. Absolutely. The, they they were middleweight sure. fighters. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, I think they would have written <laughs> more, just like Eight Mile was written, they would have written more to an ensemble. To an ensemble to support what Eminem, right. what Eminem could show. But and also, I mean, this film was originally supposed to be de developed by DreamWorks, mm -hmm. and 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 DreamWorks dropped out, and then Harvey Weinstein was attached. And we know the Weinstein brothers; they're really known for solid dramatic films. Mm -hmm. right. So I I think Weinstein did a great job delivering such a, a more gritty, emotional film. Right. Yeah, and I again, I just. I just don't know. I, I mean, I, this movie, you know, rests on Jake Gyllenhaal's performance, but I also believe that his supporting cast, whether they get lost in subplotting or whatever, I really like the girl a lot. Una, forget her last name right now, yeah, but yeah. she was fantastic. What little even Rachel McAdams is in this movie. Um, again, that scene, that the scene where she she dies. Oh is an extremely emotional scene that was um, so well handled and, 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 and worked, and, and it's in major part because of Rachel McAdams and because of Jay. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, now, with you, how did that... You said that that scene had a major impact. Without you seeing a trailer, was that a, as, as impactful? You, you know, it? I, it definitely uh, threw me, and then... For a brief minute, I thought it was going to turn to a revenge action movie. Yeah, like because <laughs> uh, I hadn't seen a trailer, I was like, "Oh, is this not going into the Rocky uh, trope?" Right. I was yeah, like, are, like we, yeah. are we going into the Punisher here? Is that <laughs> like, right? I was like, well, oh my god, <laughs> Rocky's. Well, I guess in, in any he's of the avenging Rockies, a friend. Yeah, he, Rocky. yeah, no, yeah. no, I just meant like it the took gun like violence when he took the gun with him to that. I was oh like, yeah, where like, are we going with right. this movie? Oh man, right. um, one tiny thing about the Rachel McAdams death. I'm gonna put on my nitpicker hat real mm -hmm. quick. <laughs> they the, the, the police well? the enough. police question him. Right. Did you see anything? He says nothing because he wants to handle it himself. There's a bullet inside of Rachel McAdams. That's registered to a gun. Oh, you know what? When we talk story, <laughs> I, like, I want to go in. Oh, you mean just the, the hot potato yeah. pass around of that gun that got yeah, it out there? Yeah, never yeah. There was ever never mentioned. Yeah, there were no. Yeah, when, yeah. We talk when story, we get there. Yeah. Sorry, but I, I, I hey, hey. Uh, so you know, yeah. listen. Ivan Drago should have been in jail for for manslaughter for True, Apollo because Creed. So, I, you know, <laughs> we let that if one If he slide. dies, he yeah, dies. We, no, come on. No, he already threw the towel and pushed the ref out of the way. So. So, you know, well, and just going back again, the, the production on this, and again, Alan Ritchie, producer, I get it. You know, he, he felt that, well, he felt that this was an original idea, and I sort of see where he, come, where he was coming from. because How didn't original deal with, was it? Well, it wasn't dealing with robots. It's, it's, a, it's not part of a franchise movie. Yeah. He, he believed, and, and, and I'm not going to fault him, that he was going to be delivering something something different for audiences to go to during the whenever it was going to be released you know and getting Eminem you know up, talk about you know it was probably going to be micro budgeted he could probably get Eminem to do maybe a song or two for a soundtrack I, I'm I'm happy that Eminem decided I'm going to go work on my music I'm going to yeah. finish an album because he was still in the credits and he still contributed a two song, songs yeah. I thought and, and maybe right. him just as an overall performer he may have looked into right. what this would take from him, sure, and probably may it maybe it was music was more important, or maybe it was you know what I don't I don't think that's in me, right? It's a lot. Right? So you yeah. look at all these big boxing performances; it's years of your of your oh, life, yeah. physically, mentally, emotionally, absolutely. And 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 then you know when you have this, it's you know a gritty, dark story about a father and daughter and redemption, which again. It, 
a lot of sports movies do hinge on redemption. Mm. It's it's the fall of somebody who was once big. You know, even the natural to an extent is about you know good and evil, redemption and things like that. Rags to riches, mm. absolutely. And and when you have. <clears throat> You know, but then the, the Weinstein's come on board, and they were very aggressive in getting this done, um, and making this movie, and you know, and hence now we, we now we have this movie, um, and about two, th- and it opened up in over twenty seven hundred locations in the thick of summer, you know, in mm. July, right. no less. I think that's a gamble. Uh, we can talk about perception and box office. We'll do that a little bit later too. Um, but then when you get somebody, I think when you sign on at Jake Gyllenhaal. Especially after his performance in last summer's very dark, dirty, gritty Nightcrawler, which is a fantastic, fa- great movie, um, and you see his transformation in this, like that adds credence to this movie more so than Eminem could have brought, and I think that can get some. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I actually think about that when I'm watching it. I feel like there's part of me that's like, oh man, this guy's so good, and that, oh, you know, it helps me enjoy the movie more. Just like. Thinking about his performance consciously in the yeah. theater, I'm like, man, this guy's amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. he puts. And so, why don't we talk a little bit about performance, but even more importantly, his transformation. Oh my goodness! On this, Whoa. like I know, you Crazy. know, I mean, he, he gained 15 pounds uh, of, of muscle in four months, and like that's incredible. He was working out twice a day. Um, and Anton Foucault was working out with him, which, you know what, I, I, I appreciate, whether, because... Well, Foucault used to be a former boxer as yeah, well. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, but I, I think that's, that shows a great support for your actor. Oh, yeah. When your director is like, hey, man, I'm in this with you. Like, I want to see the, I want to see you succeed, and I'm going to help you. And statistically, you're more successful at achieving something if you have someone by your side doing the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think that that was great, but his regimen... Do you have anything about oh, what you were talking about? Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Let's talk um, about a little bit mm. of this crazy regimen. Yeah. So Jake Gyllenhaal went through a six-month training with uh, um, Teddy Clayburn, and he, who's also a boxer himself mm-hmm. as well. But he started off with three-hour training sessions every single day, one in the morning, one at night. And then throughout, <sighs> for every single day, and throughout, they built his stamina and endurance, and then that got added to six hours a day in the morning and the night. So six hours total. And then also, he did a thousand sit-ups in the morning and a thousand sit-ups at night. So 2,000 sit-ups every single day. So his regimen is ridiculous. He didn't really have to worry about a particular diet. He, he had protein at night. I would hope. Carbs in the morning. <laughs> Um, but he was burning so many calories that his really his only main diet was just carbs and protein. But for six months, and then also he had to like lift tires, a two hundred pound tire across you know the gym floor forever. But his transformation is absolutely ridiculous in six months, and he got completely ripped and putting others athletes to shame. <laughs> and he learned how to box yeah, at the I mean, same yeah. time. I, I, it felt like that was a boxer. Yeah. That was a boxer. I, I boxer. felt the same that way. Was, that was like, and, and I think also we were talking about this earlier, boxing, just the way the choreography of boxing movies has come along. I mean, that felt like a real boxing match there. That too. Yeah, and, 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 and which is interesting in how they filmed that, but I just want to talk a little bit, just Jake's transformation. Yeah. Like, um, he was on... Uh, like Good Morning America, and he was like, I didn't know how to do a speed bag, like at Those all. Are hard. By the oh, end, I used of to do the, a speed bag. I've been hard. in a boxing class for about eight months. I yeah. still can't. I still can't do a speed. I mean, bag. this is a yeah. Hollywood kid who went to Harvard Westlake, right. yeah. Yeah. and now looks the part <laughs> of a professional <laughs> so light heavyweight right. boxer. And yeah, and he said by the end of it, yeah, and and I think, and again, it's just, when you look at the the three performances that I that I look at, Prisoners. Which I thought he was fantastic in Prisoners, um, and he, you know, he just adds these nuances to characters. In Prisoners, his, it was funny his his character blinked uh, a lot and very, it was just noticeable. Nightcrawler was the exact opposite. His eyes are always wide open, mm-hmm. which is sort of kind of lent to that that seediness, creepiness. And in this movie, again, his transformation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was just very. He was he owned the role, and he did look like a boxer. And um, and again, he's able to play sympathy 
mm. in a way. And again, this sort of kind of reminded me of, of Rocky mm-hmm. <clears throat> because he's able to get off that, 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 that sympathetic note and not just be a, a two-tongue gorilla yeah. who can punch. Um, so, but yeah, but also adding to that, sorry, the, I think no, the, no, no. the trainer's name was Terry Claiborne. I, yeah. I think I messed that name up. Um, but yes, Rocky compared to Southpaw, uh, what I loved about Billy Hope is that him as a fighter in the ring, he's very angry, very aggressive type of fighting. But then that's what I loved about Marine, his wife brought the softer <laughs> side of him, absolutely, outside. and his Breath daughter, him, well, yeah. And in the dot the that family aspect that really showed he has a soft side. He's a yeah. sensitive guy who really cares about people. He's loyal in that way, and that's what I think Adrian in Ra- was to Rocky. Yeah, and he, she always brought him back to earth. But never he was having problems and whatnot. He snapped him. She snapped him out of his funks and whatever. Right. So I and I think that's what Rachel McAdam did so well was play that f- female. More mother nature. Well, not mother. And she the, too the was nature, from the streets the nurturing as well. Yeah, well, the nurturing they, aspect. they were from the same orphanage. Right? Orphanage, right? Like, yeah. That's where they met. And that's and that's a thing I know. Well, I also liked that he played a like a simpleton, a guy who from who's from an orphanage, learned to box. Yeah, that's his life. Yeah, and he has like a legitimate reason for that's what sure. he does. It sounds sure. like Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but let's talk about the filming of the boxing scenes too, which I very fi- which I found extremely fascinating. Like they filmed the boxing scenes in real time, so they would go into the ring and they they would they would actually like do a, a round, yeah. and, and they would film it, hit the bell, he'd go back, sit down for a minute, hit the bell again, they'd go back in. I find that very, I mean, number one for an actor, number one, if you're if that's the way you're going to film this, uh, which hasn't. I can't recall any boxing movie being filmed this way. Rocky, Even Rocky Bell, Bell filmed this way. And it, it was we're, we're, considered revel- six like, yeah. And those are <clears throat> yeah. actual physical hits. Yeah. yeah. And the other. Like, they the, had to drain each other's ears and yeah. all. Oh, <laughs> so. Like, one of them hurt the other, and then they yeah. had to stop. Yeah. 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 And I just find that with, with it, it gives a gritty look to boxing in almost a first person perspective, in mm-hmm. a sense, by doing it. And the mere fact that they could go around and then ding sit down they gotta go through the punches so to speak but you know Jake Gyllenhaal is always did you ever take any punches it's like oh yeah <laughs> it's like oh yeah I gotta co-. you know you get a couple to the face and and again that's something else that that as an actor you know you're gonna have to endure a missed swing but I such. think that adds to the realistic element of acting because you get I bragging mean, rights for yeah that. absolutely but <laughs> yeah. it it goes off to the same principle as theatrical acting when yeah. you're on stage you get that real time um, building of your character and you're really in, ingrained in that and then yeah. I think that also builds to if you're doing it in real time it adds more to your character when yeah. you're actually filming it uh-huh. yeah basically the, the the producer basically said that yeah he took a uh, he took a shot to the face <laughs> he iced it and was back in the ring an hour later <laughs> and he's like okay oh, yeah, yeah come on let's we're doing a, a boxing movie come on <laughs> so I mean I just, on a time limit <laughs> yeah, yeah so again I, I appreciate I, you know, I appreciate Jake's performance and transformation. Um, and we were talking a little bit about Rachel McAdams, who to me is like sort of like this this enigma because I think she's a fine actress. Uh, and it's not that I don't enjoy seeing her in projects and movies and, and, and such, but she doesn't really, you don't see her on the marketing end of things. Like I didn't see her much at all for Southpaw. Now, I don't watch a lot of daytime television if they had put her on those shows, mm-hmm. but I don't even recall her on nighttime television. Like She's like, not your detective. Yeah, it could just yeah, be a yeah. function of her schedule. Well, yeah, I, right. yeah. I saw her. I, she was also sitting next to Jake John Hall at the ESPYs. Uh, that would, that's the extent of my knowledge of yeah. the yeah. press she did for this movie. So, But again, she did a really good job. And I think for that death scene, you have to sell the line, I want to go home. Mm. And you have to sell it in a way that if you're a seasoned moviegoer, you can sort of pick up on the clue that in one way, shape, or form, it may come back. And when it does come back, you don't feel like that you were overly manipulated. And she has to sell this in a way because that line does come back when Mm -hmm. his daughter Mm -hmm. says it to him. But you have to sell that line so it's not cheesy 
and that it's really heartfelt and that she wants to go home and I think that that was the emotional heft of that scene so then when it does come back you're like oh okay mm-hmm. I, I think also more than that I, I mean I don't know the exact t- run time of when she died but you have to really build your character in such a short time Absolutely. period yeah. you know I don't know was it minute 15 I, I'm not even you know I'm probably minute like 20 or so minute 20 yeah, but that's you know 20. that's not a lot of time to connect with the audience so that they feel you know like a big loss well mm-hmm. I thought wait, wait it, she, she died I, wait it was when we were like 20, 25 she was, yeah. she was in the first real. Yeah, like yeah. the inciting. In, like she, yeah. that was essentially the inciting incident. Yeah. It's just right. that you built up yeah. your characters sure. beforehand. But yeah. I, I agree. You have a little time to build her up. But Absolutely. for the amount of time that they had her, I thought they did a great job. Yeah. Because it shows she was very, she brought that sensitive side out of Billy Hope. And then also when he's giving his speech to everyone, it, he even goes into their background. So yeah. we did get to learn a lot about her character mm-hmm. in just 20 minutes. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely, which which is very important again, because she is the she's the shadow that that that's over everything and what helps progress the story and in, in moving that along. And that's why I guess to a sense, knowing that it was a that it was going to be a father daughter movie as opposed to a family relationship mm. kind of a movie. I wasn't so much as bugged about it, that being given away in the marketing and the trailer outside of the fact that watching the trailer, I was like, why are they telling me she dies? Like, they could have had a much more impactful emotional scene, mm-hmm. but I was actually, I was like, oh, okay, this is a scene where she's going to die. The mere fact that they were able to pull it off and I got... Yeah, you know, that drawn you were, in. That you were still invested. I was still invested because of performance, but I was like, God, had I not seen that in the trailer, like, man, that would have Might been... Might have delivered something different. Yeah, but, and it could have meant a little bit something else for the movie. Like, in, in again, a, a boxing movie, this is, the, you could have said it was just a movie about redemption. You yeah. know, they could have said, they could have hidden the fact that Rachel McAdams, you know, didn't die, and they could still be showing that they're, they're lugging stuff out of the house. He's lost all his money. Oh, yeah. Blah blah blah. I don't know. I, it's that that was a that was a slippery slope. I think another great thing for Billy Hope's character is that yes, he came <clears throat> from the streets and from an orphanage, but also he got to that level of power and fame, and it did kind of consume him and his family. And he did get into that mindset that he was superior in a way. And then also now stripping him again, he had to realize. To, to lose everything, he had to gain everything back. So uh, I think that also built a character aspect of him, not just, you know, going from rags to back to riches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. But as a character, it, he it humbled himself in mm-hmm. a way. Right. Again. But I do think that would help us with the journey if we didn't. Because it helped me it, if we didn't know Rachel McAdams was going to die. Yeah. But that helped, that helped me on that journey. Because I'm like, oh, he's just going to be... Me too. He's that, gonna get. Yeah. He's gonna get challenged by this guy, and he's maybe he'll lose to this guy, and then he'll have to. Right. And then right. it'll be like I typical Rocky, Rocky Three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. And Rocky. there was a lot of Rocky Three in this yes. movie. Let, let, so, let, it was let, Rocky Three honest. and Rocky Five yeah. combined. Yeah. That was basically Complete. what it was. Yeah. I, right. I, I reject. I reject the existence <laughs> of Rocky Five. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sure. I thought but they were gonna play. We learned a lot. I thought they were gonna play. Take me back. Do 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 do. Take me back. How great would have that? So uh, I would have been. Wait, what? what? Yeah. No. And I and I thought at some point I thought at some point Fifty Cent was going to say only in America. Only in America. <laughs> I pity the fool. Well, yeah, all right. Well, we are talking performance. Let's talk about. Let, let's. I want to talk about um, Una uh, yeah. for a bit. But you mentioned Una Fifty Lawrence. Cent. He's a great rapper. Yeah. He's come no, a long way. Kind of no, no, no. I mean, I, 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 I'm kidding, fair. guys. He's not a great. Rapper. No, he's not even okay. that. No, he's, <laughs> He's actually been here I to mean, the studios. To, oh, nice. to, be well, we fair, yeah. to be fair, um, he's come a long way. Um, you know, I've seen him in some earlier roles. I mean, in, in this, wasn't he in Spy? He was in Spy. Yeah, he was in Spy. Yeah. Cameo. Um, you know, he had a cameo and like he used to mumble. He still and, does. And now, I don't <laughs> I know. I had a hard time Did you? He's got very yeah. nice teeth. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was like better. Again, it, it, that character for me was sort of kind of weird because there were no, there was no bones about that character. He he didn't he didn't like 
he was all up front. He says, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm where the money's going to take me, buddy. Yeah. Like, I've always been that way, but he was still not a good guy. Yeah, but <laughs> like, yeah. there's not, like, that much depth to that person True. or that character. True. Yeah. So it was like, well, you got to bring something to that cliche. I mean, you can be that cliche, mm -hmm. and that's fine. He didn't. I like <clears throat> that he didn't oversell it. Which yeah, was nice, yeah. you know. Like, like, like you didn't need King. to do. Right. didn't yeah. need to do much because right. we now know in 2015 who that person is. We have a very yeah. clear expectation. But then, as an audience, you want to go, okay, well, what are you bringing to the table right. to that character? I just, I guess, what turned me off to was I really did buy him as as being a friend of the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I really thought that he had their best interests at heart until he started pushing that HBO deal. Um, yeah, it wasn't and, earned, the switch from friend yeah, to exactly. scumbag. It wasn't right. earned because you, they really did build him up as a friend. And then all of a sudden he's just sitting with the well, other guy yeah. and it's like, okay. And also, but Jake Gyllenhaal had a daughter and a wife. Has a daughter and a wife. Right. That his, that's all Billy Hope has. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to present, to present the 50 Cent character as a, a, another friend, we kind of just have to accept that. To then yeah. be like, oh no, wait, he's a scumbag. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal just as these two people. Right. Yeah. Well, he had his other friend he had his as crew. well. That, yeah, he had a that that supported him. Yeah, a crew of unbuilt up characters. Crews. He yeah, had a and, generic crew. Yeah, generic so, shock characters that we didn't really get to know. And then and then let's talk a little bit about Tick Willis, played mm. by Forrest Whitaker. Um, you know, and again, I felt he was a I felt it was a solid performance. Um, you know, and he was doing his best to be Mickey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally, in Mickey. a sense. Yeah, you know. And, and the fact that Billy ha Hope had to go back to a small time gym to get right. a job. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is Rocky. Oh, this is Rocky. Again. Two. This is yeah. Rocky Two. Rocky Two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and also, there was one shot where there's the staircase going up. Right. And like, oh, yeah. That's Rocky's apartment. That's the shot. Yep. But it's like, yeah, the, the shot. shot. It's, it's like the, the exact, shot. Like, shot. shot for shot. No, but going you know what? I, I was, and which Rocky movie was it that, that he was, that was it Rocky Two? two. Where he was training them to be, to be a Southpaw? Or he, no, no, that was one. Rocky no, was, was always a southpaw because yeah, he, yeah, he was switching. He trained him to switch. To, right. to switch. Train him to switch in the first movie, right. and then in the yeah. second movie, yeah. and, the, yeah. and they trained him to jab in the third movie. Right. You know, yeah. this, he didn't know how. Well, he didn't know how. Third. And I also felt let down as a southpaw by the title southpaw. Exactly. You know, it, I was I was looking for that real lefty, you know, like stance. <laughs> that lefty stance. He had one one, you know, fate, almost fatal blow. But yeah, yeah but. TKO, oh, not even TKO, but no, no, and that was also my problem too. I was like, as great as this movie was and called Southpaw, there wasn't enough Southpaw in it to be called Southpaw. Southpaw. Yeah. yeah, like, and in I any agree. in any retrospect, because the Southpaw, they, you're called a Southpaw because it's unorthodox and almost yeah. unwanted in the yeah. world. And I, I see that, but I feel like there could be more. Because he's not a like he's not. No, I thought he, it was yeah, going to land. not a left hand. Land a left. Yeah. A left Uppercut, yeah, yeah. That, that, that he was switched it. to that, just for where, one punch. Yep. Not even. That's <laughs> yep. all. That I, it. I, I think what happened was is they finished the movie and they're like, "Oh cr crap! Wait, we didn't even use any of the southpaw yeah. stuff." Yeah. Right. Like, get, get in there, <laughs> right. One more round. One more round. Well, just, just one left. It uppercut. is worth one noting M and M is left-handed. Yeah. So, maybe it is. so yeah. I think the title and that part of it. Yeah. Existed since 2010 when DreamWorks Scott Scott said he wouldn't do this movie as a lefty. He'll Probably one not. Punch. He'll do yes. one punch. Well, I mean, <laughs> he's gonna learn to box. I just in say, four months. Yeah. I just say for all you Tomorrowland haters who felt you didn't spend enough time in Tomorrowland, yeah, we only get one Southpaw oh punch in South. One, <laughs> yeah. and that's the name of the movie. So. One Southpaw. There and we I, go. And I think that's but, exactly my point with the editing and whatnot. We during the training montage, we got. Maybe ten seconds of him switching. Like, yeah, you got to switch yeah. to southpaw. Right, right. But then we get two seconds of him doing southpaw. The actual move that wasn't mm -hmm. enough time. So yeah. I felt again scenes that should have had a lot more content yeah. to it than it should. You know what I think? I think that sort of I agree with what you're saying. I, I would say that it was missing a lot of the connective tissue. Yeah, and it's like uh -huh. it's almost like I don't know how if they didn't see it or if as part of me thinks sometimes in movies like this. They get pulled out when it's like, oh, well, we have a 220-minute movie that has yeah. everything. And then we pull it down to two hours. It's missing all these things that we're talking about. It, it and then it gets dissected by people yeah. like us. Yeah. It's, it's and, missing and, that part where the cop mentions we, right. that, that it's Hector. Yeah. But, and, yeah. and before we, and be, yeah. And before yeah. we before get, get there, too, like, I just let, let's um, – I want to – Forrest Whitaker, though. I mean, did you buy him as the – I mean, because I liked him. Um, I, I bought him performance-wise. Performance-wise. Yeah. I felt like there was a lot, 
and probably in a 220 minute cut of this movie there was probably a lot more to him that had that helped sure that helped on performance alone i i bought him and i also like i also like that he isn't where mickey mickey in all the rocky films was just a trainer who ran a gym right and like that was his life and he mm-hmm. want, and he sought to like represent contenders whereas whereas right. titus <clears throat> titus willis he actually just wanted to help people yeah. help kids off the street right. and this is a way to do it yeah right. and you know and i felt that you know forrest whitaker he was believable uh, i felt uh, in that role you know and i liked him again i just couldn't that was definitely something that i couldn't get rocky out of my head mm-hmm. yeah exactly. so i want to move on to before we get to una victor ortiz who if anybody who watches the strain he's been here too <laughs> he plays a very almost a similar you know <laughs> tough like you know bravado character uh he was the quote unquote villain in this movie um you know it was he, he they almost wanted to bring him out almost to be like clubber lang i mean that was right? the clubber lang scene right? I mean, I mean, those, were, those were straight right? derivative car- <laughs> carbon copy right. scenes except for when yeah. the gunshot happened yeah. yeah you know i enjoyed that yeah, yeah. Uh, you know i don't know something about him he, he's got a certain <clears throat> Charisma to him visually. I don't you know. Mean Ma- Miguel Gomez was. Miguel. I was like yeah. Miguel Gomez. Miguel Gomez not, was not the main Victor villain. Ortiz. Oh, yeah. So Victor, Victor, confused Victor, yeah. Ortiz. Victor Ortiz. Oh, was oh, his, Victor Ortiz his was his friend. Victor Ortiz friend. was his friend. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, yeah. I, I like Miguel. I don't know something Miguel. about his face. Like it really registered he's with me got, as like a like I believed that he was that guy. I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, no, I, I felt like everybody outperformed their characters. Oh, yes. totally, totally. And like, I, I, again, I watch The Strain, I see this guy in The Strain, and he's sort of kind of like a tough, sometimes it's like over the top, but I felt when in this movie, I was like, oh my God, he's like, yeah, he totally is this role. He's um, He plays it really well. He was the baddie. I just wish there was more come up and for him. I wish there was more comeuppance for that character. He, he sure as hell deserved yeah, it. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted a more reason why he was so adamant against Billy. We, I Granted, he wanted the title. I shot at the title, yes, but it wasn't enough to him to be blatantly disrespectful. Clark Lang like was. But I he mean, could have had... The way, the way he played him and the way that character felt, at some point he needed to have like an introspection of Actually, dude, I'm sorry. Something. I was hoping yeah, that that would happen, like, but since he, since that never, I agree with you. And since that never happened, I was like expecting at the end when he in the ring, he was still acting like an asshole in that last fight. If any reason there was for Jake Gyllenhaal's character to unload, yes, that was yeah. it. And you were gonna be, dude, you were gonna get it now. And like, if you can be angry anywhere, it's allowed in the ring. Go knock this block off. Uh-huh. <laughs> knock him into tomorrow, Rock. Totally and I didn't right. even get that. I, I, I wanted him to kill him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, I wanted that uppercut one, to end him. Same yeah. here. There was one second that I, I really did enjoy how his character ended. Granted, he, you know, he was a big baddie. But when we finally announced that Billy Hope was the winner, we had that one quick shot, and you saw him actually fall to down to his knees. I yes. was like, "All Too right, quick. I didn't even that, see that." Yes, yeah. he did though. So yeah, quick, but that was that one shot. I was like, "Yes, he's literally being taken down." All right, well, okay. I accept that. You know, it's funny yeah. we were talking about the Rocky Three comparison. What's interesting to me is that they gave you what you needed in Rocky Three for that sort of like Clubber had a reason. Because Rocky was ducking him, and yep. Rocky mm-hmm. didn't know he was ducking him. There were layers of right, it. Right, that, right, that right. All of it felt like, and it was like Clubber earned that first victory. Like all of it, right. you know. And, and yeah. none of those pieces were there. It's like if you're gonna rip off Rocky, then put those in there too. You have to for the for or the just, emotional heft. Yeah, or just make least. this character. If you're if he's gonna be this terrible person yeah. whose crew shoots your wife, yeah, and then he, then you take wife, your yeah. you take his title, yeah. Be that terrible. Be that terrible person. Be that, exactly. Yeah. And, that, and, and, and like they tried to give him humanity and sympathy, and I'm like, I don't want to be sympathetic. I want, I they, want Jake Gyllenhaal to defeat this man yeah. in every way possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same here. And and like you're right. They, they they tried to give him humanity for like 
two seconds because when he was throwing his crew out, he was like yelling at the guy, going, he's "What a, the hell are you doing?" At the very like, least, an accessory to murder. Right. At, I mean, the yeah, very, I, at least, the at very, the very least, very least, dude. Felony murder rule, depending on I don't know if that's in, in effect in New York. I'm a lawyer, but I don't remember the felony and murder rule. And how they dropped that that's, story was ridiculous. It, uh, it, well, and that bothered me too. But uh, you know, I want to <laughs> let's talk a little bit now about Una Lawrence because. I really think, again, a lot of this movie uh, is on her shoulders as the daughter. And this is a role that um, I feel that could have really been played too over the top and almost to the point of annoyance for a little kid. And I think that she played it like there were little hints for me of like a very young Tatum Mm O'Neill type of uh, role. And I thought she played it. I thought she played it fabulously, um, and and that's a good thing because I think a lot of people, if she played it the wrong way, uh-huh. people may have criticized her. And I hate criticizing kids because I th- I feel that they're still learning this craft. There's so much to go, but she was very good. And in the scene that you talked about at the top of the show, or the slap scene, yes, mm-hmm. again a very integral scene in this movie. It needed to be sold because this is when. You know, our boxer is like seeing anger through somebody else's mm-hmm. eyes, mm. and I thought she sold it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Was, I was watching an interview on, I think it was Good Morning America with Jake and Una, and he and he was talking about that scene, and he said, you know, it was the first time he realized he passed on his rage to his daughter. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's mm-hmm. like it was it was wasn't just one slap. You know, it's like multiple. Yeah, it was. It was everything she had was coming out on him yeah. at that moment in the same way that he unleashes on people. Yeah, I, I thought she did. Um, you know, with 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 right parenting and good smart management, she she could continue to have a good career. I think she really was able to stand toe to toe with Jake Gyllenhaal. But again, you really did sense that in this movie regardless of story and whatnot i felt there was good chemistry amongst yeah, our actors yeah. absolutely jake and forrest jake and rachel jake and una even jake and 50 cent i thought there was a chemistry there um, and you know and this movie could have been a hell of a lot worse <laughs> right what i liked about layla's character is that i believed her and her unfortunate situation because she- in a way, she was also put in a similar situation that her father was in when he was young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because coming from an orphanage, and now she going into child care services, like not having parents. And to be thrown into that situation, I completely believed her performance being frustrated with her own father, not having parental figures to help her out, and especially during that grieving and losing a mother. Um, I it was She was amazing, Una I, Lawrence. I actually sold. liked those scenes in some ways the best like the court scenes and seeing her in child services it just felt brutally real Mm -hmm. like how his bad decisions really are crippling this girl in a lot of ways yeah it was uh, and and you get the anger and she portrayed it really well without again some kids they're directed in such a way in which the anger just comes off as like they're, they're too steaming hot. Yeah. Well, and mm-hmm. she... Well, because how do you ask a kid... Right. How do you ask a kid who, by their nature, has very limited experience emotion with what anger is and how... Like, how do you ask a child to display right. that? I agree. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's, it's tough. Child acting is really... Yeah, really, no, she it's had kind a, of she ridiculous. Had, she had an emotional intelligence well beyond her years. Yes. Right. yes. You know, and, and let, let's say it's, she, 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 was a, she played Matilda on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she has theatrical experience. She was... Uh, she started in a short film with uh, F. Murray Abram and Ralph Macchio. Uh, it was called Penny Dreadful. Is it? Do you know nah. that? Is that? Oh, a different Penny Dreadful. Different, different, different Penny Dreadful. Not the show. Like, she is part of... Oh, she uh, also played a yeah. young Tiff- uh, Tiffany. She, she yes. played a young Pensatucky. On yeah. Orange is the New Black. Oh, I do remember that. Oh. I love that. And um, she comes from an acting family. So she has, you know, so she has this within her blood. Again, I think with the right parenting and, and, and good solid management that takes care of her, she has a really good solid career. Now, um... We can talk about, we should probably talk about story now. Um, you know, I think we're itching to talk about this stuff. And I said from the top, I felt that, I thought that some of this plotting was trite. Um, <laughs> and and we talked about how this could have been a two hour, you know, a two hour and 20 minute movie or so. Mm-hmm. And it was a long movie. Um, 
You had even said that there was, uh, Mar Marissa, you talked about the pacing. There were some slow times and, you know, there were dangling subplots that were never ever resolved. Like, like the murder of his wife. His wife. Which, oh, that? Oh, the inciting, that little, the that inciting that incident thing. of the whole thing. Yeah. You mean the homicide that was witnessed by like 30 or 40 people? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And probably have cameras in the lobby of the hotel. Yeah. Right. Where did the gun go? And, yeah. and this is where I go to, it just seemed that the, the punishment didn't fate fit Jake Gyllenhaal's crime <laughs> because he didn't really do anything other than he lost a wife, he lost the He lost I mean, everything. He yeah. lost everything and yet he's being so severely punished. But I'm like, why isn't anybody trying to figure mm -hmm. out who the hell killed the wife because let alone find that guy his name's Hector. <laughs> it's Miguel's brother. Yeah. yeah. They did establish that. Yeah, like but Jake lost his boxing license. And yeah, he lost. Yeah. To he lost. He didn't get suspended, or no, no, no. at least. No. no. Yeah, oh, you no. were involved in the fatal shooting of another boxer's wife. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No Just mention a, a, of a it person at all. in a hotel yeah, lobby no. in front of everyone. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think he had like an automatic weapon in his pocket. Too. I mean, yeah, I like, like an, a semi-automatic <laughs> too. The whole. And I think that's what once I got over. Once I got over, like, wow, he's, he lost everything and, like, how deflated I was emotionally from seeing Rachel McAdams go and not knowing that that was going to happen. And then, to like, the next scene is the cops. So do you know anything? All right, I guess this case is yeah. dead. Yeah, I guess this case is <laughs> We're, yeah, we're going to solve this 20 years from now in a court case. If Billy Hope can't tell us, right. we're, all, mean, we're all out of ideas, guys. It, it, that really stuck with me throughout the rest of the movie and again it came up to our villain didn't get his comeuppance no. it wasn't that he was just disrespectful he had a blatant hand or his crew or his had a he killed his wife and you figured he would have un and he knew this <laughs> and you figured he was going to unload on him especially yeah. he tried so hard to keep it professional but i think from an audience perspective mm -hmm. if after he mouthed off to him but and, and Brennan, like, you just took him out. Yeah. The audience, that would have been my stand yeah. up and cheer moment. <laughs> but we, <laughs> totally. But, it's com but it, that goes against the other thing we're learning is that Billy Hope as a character just isn't, Billy Hope as a person isn't managing his rage correctly. And that's how he's boxing, and that's how he learns to box and defeat an opponent like a man. Sure. Mm -hmm. Which would make more sense if we gave Miguel a little more humanity. And it was his brother. It was his brother, and we had a little more peace. I, and I it was his lot. brother Hector, and he had nothing to do with it. And like he had to suffer too. And like this is two people colliding yeah. in F in the wake yeah, of I mean, it was close an to ultimate it. It was tragedy. Close to like a hit, you know what I mean? Like, it, was so, like, it was almost like a hit. It was like just it was so far fetched. It was like you know what I liked about uh, Rocky Three again. You know, you go back to Rocky Three. Clubber Lang pushes uh, Mickey, Mickey, but he doesn't. He's not trying to kill him. You know no. that wasn't his intention in any way. Caught up in the moment. That he died helps build up the right. emotional attachment for the audience, but it doesn't have us it, go. That guy is a murderer. That no, just but yeah, run. it didn't. But it was still a. It was su It was still a dick move. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, you know what, you, Marissa? Your thoughts? Like you know, I mean. Um. Yes, I think that. We, you know, American cinema tor storytelling, we're so used to having the bad guy getting justice in the end. And we didn't get that. So yeah. I think that's where all of our frustration lies. Yeah. But also, I saw this moment as maybe it was, it's not okay that they just dropped it, but I can understand why they did. Because it was more so move off of the, because then it could just get into a whole investigation murder type of storytelling, which is takes us away yeah. from yeah. what I the character is. Because after this whole, we, we lose this part of the movie, it's more so just about Billy Hope and his whole journey to getting back to where he started. I, but I would figure that Billy Hope would really want to put forth who the hell killed my wife. Like, like, and for one minute well, for before one it minute. turned into the Punisher, right. for a second, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, no, so, but he, right. like, I just, you would just, he oh. just, he knows though, and then he gets into a car and tries to kill that person. Yeah, yeah. And, and and which was a which was a really good scene, but after you decide, after you realize, like, Jesus, I'm gonna be crossing a line, you've got to let somebody. Again, it would have been okay for me if he let the villain know. Listen, asshole, I know you I had know, a hand yeah. in this. 
bam, you broke yeah. and then heart done. Yeah, even you know, in the ring, something, something like that. You know? Something because yeah. if he's gonna mouth off to him, because he's been playing it sort of tempered. Right. I don't know. It was a subplot that sort of kind of. The flip side me. is he tried to kill himself after not killing. Yes, us. right. And so you know, once you cross that line into I tried to kill myself and end things, mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. I lost my daughter. It is almost like. It was about him getting his daughter back. Yeah. At that point, mm-hmm. you know, so it just which became I liked. the journey of Billy Hope after that. Sure, yeah. sure. Although, but you would hope that some of that journey would be for the bad guys to to pay for. Like, and again, it didn't have to turn into a Punisher movie. Yeah. yeah. To a revenge movie, but just so that there was some because they outside of the audience. Those he's like the only. They're like the only two characters that know. Well. Plus the guy that actually pulled the yeah. trigger. And like 50 people in that lobby. Everybody, Everybody we don't know those people. We don't see those people. We don't see those people. My other, my other, um, uh, my other dangling subplot uh, in this movie, which is a part that really put the brakes on as far as pacing for me. Because I was like, what the hell? Come on. Was uh, Hoppy. Mm. Hoppy, Hoppy, <laughs> Hoppy. I, I was like... Okay, so we introduced this kid. Oh, cute enough kid. I thought maybe he was going to make it to the end. He was going to be in the ring, giving water or whatnot. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, oh, you know, then Hoppy gets killed. We learn off, you know, he gets killed off screen by his father and stuff. And then all of a sudden, Forrest Whitaker goes into this whole thing. I'm like, you both well, so long, Hoppy. We, we, we hardly even knew yeah, you. Yeah, we don't and care about like, Hoppy. What the hell? I mean. No, but, that, okay, <laughs> I, I can understand where you're coming from. Uh, that's where I saw it. Tick Willis as why he took in Billy Hope because he's a guy who's been through the ringer literally and he's seen the past and he uh, he's experienced people that have come through his life that have struggled and have come from dark past and whatnot to so also in a way to for like parallels there's Billy Hope who had his past and then Hoppy who come from a bad background as well so I see Tick being like, yes, I can help these people out and give them a chance, whether it be training in my gym and whatnot. So to see that he wanted Billy Hope to have some, you know, a better ending as well. I I, I, I believe I, that. I, I see what you're saying, and and I and I get that, and that's that that's great insight. I I would just say, why have the character if you're gonna have like the, like that would have been great dialogue at the bar, going mm. like tick going to. To Jake's character going, uh, to like the Billy Hope going, you know why I do this? I don't do this for the prestige. The reason why I don't train pros is because I knew this young kid. His name was Hoppy. Mm-hmm. And this kid came from yep. a broken background, yes. blah, blah, blah. It would have been a five-minute dialogue, yes. a nice monologue. And he goes, and he was killed because he stepped in front of a bullet that was meant for his yeah. mom. Yeah. From his dad. And then but that's why I do this job. But instead, we get introduced to a kid who sort of befriends Billy Hope. Who then dies, and then we get this whole monologue, and I'm like, going, wait, isn't there another movie? Wait, isn't there a murder that needs to be like that's more important than this? And then the next scene, it's like, next scene, there's no more hobby. No more hobby. Well, we move I, it on. Again, I, that's why I say editing room floor. I like, I, it feels like there was one other scene where Hoppy and Jake Gyllenhaal were talking about their childhoods, and he's like, you know, we are the same, you and I, you know, something, yeah. and it's like, you know, you just gotta stick with what you're doing and it'll all work out in the end, Hoppy. And then do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And That's where I saw the similarities. It was like Hoppy right. is the younger version. I want to see the unedited version for the extended Hoppy cut. <laughs> the hop- That's what they're going to call it. <laughs> the, the, the Hoppy cut. The Hoppy cut. cut. <laughs> There's got to be a Hoppy cut. Also, so, I think... I, I'd like to think there was a Also, hoppy I think cut they named him... They named him Hoppy as an homage to... Because if this were going to be a continuation of 8 Mile, there was a B-Rabbit in B-Rabbit 8 B-Rabbit and Hoppy. B-Rabbit, B-Rabbit and Hoppy. Can I, can I ask if it bothered Very anyone true. else that his name was Billy Hope? Yeah. Like, Hope. Billy Symbolism. the Great, why didn't we put white in there? It's, like, so well, stupid. Th- but they had, the a lo- they had a bunch of inserts. I'm just of... saying, it's, like, so ridiculous. Also, there's a and lot of... And just Hope the symbolism. It, it, it hit you like a Southpaw punch. Yeah, it hit me like a Southpaw There's a lot of stuff on paper with this movie right. that the performances do elevate. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, oh, absolutely. Like, that very first scene where it's... He grew up in he grew up in a um, orphanage in Hell's Kitchen, right. which is only ten miles away from Madison Square Garden, but it's more like a million miles. Yeah. Right. On paper, that seems really, really cheesy. Right. Yeah, I hope he didn't say ten I, miles. It's like ten blocks. Yeah, plus. I think they. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm. I'm not the direct quote. <laughs> I think it was eight miles. Uh, well, it's ten uh, blocks. From, uh, it's literally ten. It's yeah, literally it is ten, ten blocks. blocks. So, so. Well, not they because they shot this whole movie in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but. So. No, I mean, there were so many things on the nose, on paper, and this, you know, trite, every cliche in the book was, yeah. was in this, in yeah. this 
screenplay. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, yes. like everyone you could think of, yeah. almost. And, and again, that you know, it's, and, and for sports, I've said this when, when we were doing McFarland, um, and I forget what other sports we've done a, we've done a handful sports. of sports films. Pardon me. I think they've. It's come to. They're hard to do because here's the deal: you either win, you lose, or you draw. That's it. So you've got to tell a story that by the end, whether it be win, lose, or draw, you know that that's one of the outcomes that's going to mm-hmm. happen. So some of the suspense is sort of kind of gone. So you have to build up your character in such a way that you care when he or she win, loses, or draws, or or if it's a team. Like, you know, yeah. I go back, you know, to the Bad News Bears. What makes the Bad News Bears such a wonderful sports film and satire is not that they win, but they actually lose the game, but they're the winners. Yeah. You, you come mm-hmm. off and they're the adults, not the adults who are coaching. Rocky, Rocky, he it's it's technically a draw and it goes to the previous it goes yeah, to it goes the standard champ. Yeah. And then but he to loses, Rocky, and then he, wins again. he wins. You know, yeah. I mean, and there's the like. I, it wasn't so much about winning. It was it was just staying in the ring. Yeah, and like mm-hmm. I get emotional thinking about it. Yeah, and I, this movie didn't. I mean, this movie that. had the stem of the stem. The stem. <laughs> it had the stem of <clears throat> Jake Gyllenhaal is beating up his opponents, but he's not defeating them. Mm-hmm. He's letting them punch him until he gets angry enough to unleash that anger on them. Mm-hmm. Which is just not a, a good, healthy way to live your life. Yeah, I, th- I think they were stuck trying to get to the root of his anger and all that mm-hmm. stuff and like they never really got there, you know, but at the, I, for me I was just like, I just want him to get his daughter back. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, I just want him to get his daughter I don't even and care then he if gets he his daughter back. So he yeah, he you gets know? his daughter back and then there's a, then there's a big fight. Yeah. Like right. I, and I the big seen, fight felt yeah. inserted or the daughter back felt yeah. inserted, depending on who you asked. Like I just right. that was to me like the resolution. Like just kiss the daughter back. The guy's like yeah. rede- he redeemed himself already. Right. And when Penny was Well in he this spent movie. the whole he spent most of the movie just trying to get his daughter yeah. back. Right. And then they just like tacked the fight scene at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's 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 like, okay, now I've got acceptance from my daughter. Or now I have, uh, you there, know, right. acceptance from Adrian. Yeah. And then I'm going to go into the ring win. and, you know, you know. Win daddy. Yeah, yeah. win daddy. Win. So, um, yeah, it, like that I, stuff just sort of I also feel like me. I also feel like it would have shown an incredible amount of restraint to have him lose on points at the end of, it, at the, end of the, the big fight. Yeah. Because if it's about him winning, he won. He got his daughter back. Right. So to put him back on top, and to, like I know the trope for him to for him to win everything makes just as much sense. But I I, I would have enjoyed the self restraint to be like split decision. He lost by two points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he walks away with his daughter. He walks away yeah. with his daughter and his life back. Yeah, and he's he lives to fight another day. There's gonna be a rematch because it went to a split decision, and that's not what the, this movie isn't about him getting his belt back. Right. Right. Yeah, and I don't know. Yeah. It could. It, it I saw it as more so he, he was winning both his personal and professional lives yeah. back. Yeah. So, yeah. So you know, so we talked plotting, and yeah, I mean, and these are the things that really bothered me in this movie, where I can, you know, I, I thankfully can say that the the performances totally outshined the script and or screen, you know, well, yeah. the script and screenplay, which is a good thing uh, from an editing standpoint. Um, you know, John Rafoa edited this film. I thought that again. I thought boxing was was um, filmed very well. I did want more out of the training sequences. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted more. I like I like flipping tires. I want to see more more non traditional. Yeah, yeah. You know. I wanted to see a full four and a half minute song. You know, yeah. training no easy montage. Way like out. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, come on. There's yeah. It's he's got to climb. Cuts now. Yeah, he's got to climb something or chop something. <laughs> right. He's got to run in the snow. Yeah. Heart's on no, no. fire. He's got to be upside down. <laughs> on fire. But, but but I did think that it was edited well. Um, even more so. Uh, Mauro Fiore, the director of cin- uh, the, direct- the the DP, mm. the cinematography. This movie did look good. Oh, it this movie looked great. It, it felt was like a legit, beautiful. you know, big yeah. budget. You know, boxing movie. It was great. Absolutely, yeah. and, and it did remind me of 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 the first Rocky. Yeah, yeah. the first Rocky has grit. To it's it. had a lot of grit. This oh movie. yeah, and this movie had that 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 grit as well. But even in the scenes, like the slow scenes, um, I really like the way 
uh, there was a scene at the beginning of the movie uh, with Billy and his daughter uh, in her bedroom mm. and she had like this soft lighting and she was talking like geez dad you got really beat up and he goes yeah you want to see the other guy I again it's a it's a cliche line that we've heard before but it, it worked and I think partly by the way that that shot was filmed and the mm -hmm. way that it looked so and it gave this other side of Billy Hope and then and, and but then Rachel McAdams character she comes in she goes she, he goes you want to see the other guy she goes no you won't no. <laughs> no. so you know it and was a nice that's scene. what I loved about this film they let some scenes need to breathe like they yeah. gave that room that to build the emotional level that we needed to get to but also again going back to the pacing I felt that there were some things that were obviously probably cut out and from it going now now they they completely rushed a six month deal to, no, or six yeah, week, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry a, six a six week, week deal <laughs> from HBO they had to set that all up yeah. where were the press conferences where was the announcement to that I mean we got the yeah, short the training press conference I would have yeah. murdered we got the most important one right? I would have yeah, loved to have seen that we got a short conference. training montage sequence of him yeah. for the fight but it was completely rushed it's like okay now there's the humongous fight at the yeah. big arena again in Las Vegas of all places right, right. It's yeah. like I, I, I there should have been more conference. to build up yeah. to the big this is this is my impression scene. of that Miguel uh, there are rumors that you had something to do with the death of his wife in the hotel well, you could, hey if she died she died she died uh. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Just in that mark, because she died. Yeah, she. Yeah. No, I, listen, I, I I also like the the naked the naked. Tw There's so much from Rocky in this. So I like much. Really, yeah. So the naked, much. Naked shower scene with him uh, hunched yeah. over. Yeah. yeah. And then also when he's running out in the streets in gray sweatpants. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Just with the hood. He didn't need any raw I mean, eggs, though. Yeah, what? he didn't do any raw he eggs, and he wasn't chasing know, any chickens. We know better about that. We had the yeah. the jump rope scene too. Yeah, definitely the totally jump rope Rocky. scene. Yeah. I like that thing with where he tied the ropes in the in the ring. That was yeah, 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 that yeah. Was a newer that's, that's yeah, new. That's I, I like yeah. that. Um, but I want to talk about like I want to talk about the training scene and such because this is bringing me into music, um, not the Eminem score, but I want to talk about the James Horner score. This is um, the love. late the, the 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 late James Horner who sadly passed away um, recently, plane plane accident I believe, and. Oh. Um, this man has brought so much to cinema. He's meant so much to my movie going, whether it be Wrath of Khan or Aliens uh, and a plethora of more. In this movie, uh, he gets a thank you uh, at the end. He gets like mm -hmm. a little memorial. And uh, I believe he has the score for Antoine's Magnificent Seven uh, already mm -hmm. in the can for him. Um, and, and he enjoyed working with Anton Fuqua. I really there there were snippets of score in this movie, but, and I was hearing there wasn't enough for me. I, I wanted like if you're gonna go the Rocky route, you gotta use a little bit of like you gotta use that orchestral score to help swell up the emotion. Mm. Like okay, maybe you don't do it during the training because maybe that's you know too obvious. But what wasn't obvious? Uh, in this movie, that yeah, you're gonna yeah. manipulate. Right. Let's a little gonna manipulate. It. Yeah, do a um, one-off Rocky and, theme. And at yeah. the right, and, and and but there seemed to be a hint of it in in James Horner's score. Um, am I just completely no? You're like, right. Off it's base there. or because I didn't relate to the Eminem rap song. It didn't. Fit I liked it. To me. it. I did and like it. it. Like, okay. I remember it, the Eminem song from the trailers because yeah. that was heavily promoted mm -hmm. in that way. But for I didn't realize James Horner scored you know a theme to this movie until yeah. the credits start yeah. yeah and they <laughs> you know, announced to james according yeah. to the trivia section of imdb which has been known to be faulty sure. says that the director had no money to pay james horner yeah. to compose the film due to the film's mm. short budget right. however james didn't care as he loved the idea and decided to do it for free wow. yeah oh, yeah he man. said to him he said look i love the movie i love the father-daughter relationship because don't worry about the money i'm just gonna do it and he oh. did it what a man. No, That's it, incredible. Well, yeah. it, 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 really, wild. It, it, it really is, and it really punctuates. I, I love movie scores. I, I, I collect soundtracks. And, um, yeah, his passing, you know, that because it, it came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's a bummer. I wished it was utilized more. In, I, I wish I heard more of it. Right, um, and especially for a film like this where it's <clears throat> more heavily dramatic. Yeah. It's yeah. a perfect opportunity to use it for transitional scenes going from more emotional to emotional. Yeah, 
I believe. Yeah. I so, uh, and, and again, for me, I, you know, I could have done, to me, orchestral, when you're in this type of a movie, which is supposed to be emotional, I think a good James Horner orchestral score would have lent more impact than an Eminem. But I, I, that that's just me. I'm sure there's tons of people out there who think I'm off my ride. Yeah, I like the Eminem song. I, I, I really dug them. Yeah. The Eminem song felt a tad out of place for me. That's what it was. Just because yeah. of the, that score. But at the same time, I was like, oh, yeah, he produced, he produced the he movie. He produced the movie. I, I he produced the movie there. He gave him two it's, songs. He was supposed it's, to be part of the movie. It's, right. in, in a like, it's literally on the billboard. It's on the billboard, Southpaw, yeah. with music by Eminem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, awareness of this movie. And perhaps, perhaps we'll, we'll talk legacy if any Mm -hmm. so um the weinstein company released this movie its production budget was 30 million uh all in with hard drives uh in advertising about 55 million okay it came in at number five uh domestic box office came in at number five its opening weekend gross was 16.7 million dollars um and to date it's about 23 million dollars uh, estimated uh, no worldwide box office yet. Um, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a fifty-eight percent, which I think about right. Yeah, yeah. critics I, gave it, but the, but the audience gave it an eighty-three. It gave it yeah. a cinema score of an A. I actually like which cinema is, score more than <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I think because right. Rotten yeah. Tomatoes to me, I always because it's trying to quantify yes or no, but still use numbers. Yeah, for me, and, Rotten and, Tomatoes, I'm always like, ah, oh, it's fifty-eight, but I'm like, but it, that's a yes. I don't want to give it's, away it's too yes many no. secrets, but don't think for a sec that studios don't have their I'm own sure their buys in their their, their oh, buy to Rotten Tomatoes, where they have publicity teams oh, hitting sure. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I feel more I'm just saying, oh, yeah. Yeah. just you know, it, it could happen. It could happen. It's a, I don't it's know a good, fact. it's a good but, ballpark. But cinema, yeah, yeah. You know. But cinema score. I would give the performances definitely an A. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, let me. <laughs> I can't ask this of you because you're pretty much an empty theater. How how crowded was your theater? Um, uh, my theater was probably last Friday morning. So okay. it was last Friday morning. The Universal Ten City people? Walk, like twenty or thirty people. But it was literally the Friday morning it opened. Right. But it was like maybe noon. Okay. Did, so did, you wouldn't expect that much on a weekday. But mm-hmm. was there? Um, I guess what I'm getting at, I'm trying to do my own poll for audience uh-huh. reaction. Like, did people cheer at the end? No, they, yeah. nothing like that. Um, I, I went to like a 7.30 screening at night, so it was pretty decently full. Not all, you know, sold out, but there was a good amount, probably around 20, 30 people. Did people, people. cheer at the end? Was did there like an audio? People or? clapped at the yeah. end, okay. yeah. I, yeah, I, I could. That's what I was saying. Like, did you, you never tell these things? Did your really? entire yeah. audience? Uh, oh, that was good. It was that good for you. That <laughs> was good. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Clap of yeah. Um, yeah. When I started, I, I, it was a packed house, um, and yeah, I mean, the the, the apl- there was applause, but it wasn't overwhelming. It wasn't like it wasn't like yeah, oh my god, and, and yeah. you know, I wanted to walk out of the theater feeling really, really good, like great um and again i'll throw back to mcfarlane like that movie was about running and that movie got me emotionally involved in it and i but still that think movie had like yeah it, did. Did. it, it, really, it had that moment it, it really, earned it really did um so let's talk a little bit we, we talked about the performances what are your thoughts on i mean do you think that because of trite story story and screenplay do you think that hurts somebody's like jake Gyllenhaal's Gyllen hall's chance for any type of nomination come into the air i think i mean do you think he's number do you think he's nominatable and do you think that the story could hurt those chances Ooh, i historically mm-hmm. i think not being released during like the official the more or less official oscar season which mm-hmm. is later in the fall that's already kind of hurting him for any nomination but that doesn't that doesn't stop people right doesn't stop nominations in the past well, we like physical transformations. We know yeah. that. Yeah, Hollywood we like, loves we like, you know, Monster. we like redemption stories. And I think also Jake Gyllenhaal is having what we'd call a moment. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. I think he's having a moment right now. He's at the apex of his career. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he really is, for his generation mm-hmm. of actors, he's really stepping up to the right. top of that pile. And I think 
people in the industry tend to want to acknowledge that when that happens. I agree. Um, you know, the other thing too, we have to think. I mean, this is a Weinstein movie. Yeah. Though they will push. Oh, well, you know, but they have they, they have, have other the, movies. Um, they well, have they have Hateful Eight, which right. which I have a feeling that they will they will, they will spend some t tender loving care mm -hmm. on that movie. We've yet to see it, but it's Quentin Tarantino, so you expect you expect good things from it. I, I just it just makes me wonder. You know, they have love for Southpaw. Um, you know, come awards love season. Love for boxing movies in general. Yeah. 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 And I just wonder, will the Weinsteins, you know, give a little TLC to Jake and try to get the nomination, even though they do have, like, you know, uh, I forget when I forget when Hateful Eight is coming out. It's either November, December. Yeah, like that. that so it's that coming prime, in that prime. That prime time you release, right. you release Oscar bait. You'd right. have to figure that was part of the convo. I mean, I don't know how these convos go with these A-list actors sure. and, and the Weinsteins, you know, if they're sitting there. But you'd have to figure that was part of the initial yeah. sell. Mm -hmm. This is going to be your Oscar movie. Yeah, I would think. I would th Oscar you know, movie. I would yeah. think. The, you know, that was right. probably. Well, yeah, he's already. Mm -hmm. uh, was he nominated for um, Brokeback? I don't. Uh, we'd have to look it up. I, he I was. Think he's Ledger Golden was Globes, though. I think he was. I think Golden Globes, definitely. Yeah. He probably got a so, Golden Globe for that. And yeah, let, but if let, you, let, yeah, if you also think about it, this is a Weinstein movie about boxing. I recall the last one that they did was The Fighter. Right. Yeah. It was yeah. also Weinstein yeah. plus boxing. Yeah. So and that was that Weinstein The Fighter. I thought that was released by Paramount. I think that was a Weinstein's. Paramount picture. Um, the, spice, the principal yeah. photography and international distribution okay. rights were to Weinstein Weinstein's. for um, The Fighter. But again, that movie did great back in yeah. 2010. Uh -huh. So many nominations, and Mark Wahlberg got a nomination mm -hmm. for Best Actor. That Christian was also Bale. a true story, yeah. yes, which true. always helps. You yeah. say based on a true story, yeah. it's already like... Yeah. You know, oh, okay. For some reason, that makes it more worthy the acting yeah. role. And you had another great transformation in Christian Bell. Yeah, yes. You know, and I yeah. think when you look at the fighter and you look at Southpaw, Dicky. <laughs> you know, the fighter is a just a damn fine, damn good movie. Yeah, and, and it has um, like interesting characters we haven't seen before. Right. I right. think we a, a world like a war a, a subsection right. of the a boxing, boxing world we haven't seen before. Right. Whereas this was exactly what we've seen before. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that just happened to be studded with some solid performances. Yeah. It, it, you know, it, it was one of the things I was thinking about. I was like, God, you know, Jake was so good in his past three movies. You know, he's eventually going to get to that point where you know, and now accepting the award for best actor. I think I don't know if this is it, but it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll, so it'll eventually happen. You know, and and you gotta, you have to, you have to appreciate his not only his commitment, but he went out to, he marketed it. He was on GMA. He was on Howard Stern. He was on the Howard Stern show. For he gave like an hour and a half <laughs> plus interview, and he comes off as being just this down to earth like guy. He tends to really like, like, he loves supporting kids and all that stuff. And that comes through. And, and like you said, Hollywood loves that that person. Everybody likes Jake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like, then we're talking, you know. There's really not one movie of Jake's that Yeah, I don't he makes like. good choices. That's <laughs> yeah. Prince of Persia. You know? well, that was yeah. a fun yeah. movie. That was that a great choice. If, if that's his bad, but, you know, that's. And like that was still entertaining. I mean, and that was a great Disney transformation as well. Yes. He was, that was yes. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Although I am reading IndieWire's doing uh, best, best actor predictions. Jake Gyllenhaal is on this list. Okay. Yeah. Along, it's about a 30 person list. 30 people. Including Eddie Redmayne. Um, including Joseph Gordon-Levitt twice, twice for both The Walk and Snowden, Tom yeah. Hiddleston, Jack O'Connell, Will Smith, Brad Pitt, the the usual suspects yeah, for these sure. for these also, lists in August. You have to remember, we're only in the middle of 2015. Uh, yeah. We oh, still yeah. have the rest of the year and yeah. actual Oscar season, yeah, no, which is why you're talking about timing. It's not great. Yeah, yeah. people are gonna forget if, this movie if, by if December, the goal, January. If you're selling this movie on the Oscar buzz, you don't release it. Now, right. yeah, mm -hmm. right. So, and I'm, you know, I am going to bring up something that you and I were talking about. So, the legacy, because we said, <laughs> oh, well, no, you yeah. and I were talking yeah. about this, yeah. and I was like, well, I don't know how you can compare that, but I'm going to throw it out there anyways because it's still a good point for the sake of our conversation and for anybody who's watching and listening. Um, you know, the legacy of boxing movies. I, I thought of my dad when you when you said that. By the way, oh, okay. mm -hmm. just, it I just made me good. no, it just made I me think like thing. he's the kind of guy that'll probably watch this when it's on TV. Right. right. Okay. He's not like super crazy. He's not sitting here like us dissecting right. it. Right. Because it's a solid boxing movie. Okay. How do you put it in the well? Do you, how do you put it in the pantheon of like sports movies and then the, the subcategory of boxing movies? 
Um, in the subcategory of boxing movie, it is better than a lot of subpar boxing. You know, it's, it's in the uh, top 70%. Wow, that's yeah, and, okay. I agree. Or, yeah, let's let's agree. so okay. So it's definitely not as good as the fighter. No, and it might be better than Rocky Five or Six. I Rocky oh, Five doesn't so exist. Much right. than five. It's on par with <laughs> so much better. Right. Than five. So okay, okay, so it's somewhere there. What other boxing? But movies? it's not better. Uh, uh, yeah, another Cinderella movie that Man. This movie, Cinderella, Cinderella Man. Cinderella Man. Million Dollar Baby. You know, I didn't love Million Dollar Baby. Raging Bull. I didn't love Million Dollar Baby. Play to the bone. Play it yep. to the bone. Yeah. But there's uh, one other. Town. I like Digstown. You know that's what? Digstown's a fun yeah, movie, man. It's not totally a different genre. So we got the two, the two really people a, who yeah. saw Digstown. Yeah. But there was one other movie there's that we haven't champ. yet. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You have not mentioned its its closeness to the champ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which again, a movie that if you don't if you're not crying at the end of John Voight's champ with yeah. Ricky Schroeder. Yeah. I so mean young. Oh my god. He's so young. And that movie again, but that movie delivers an emotional and when an emotional heft that is a story about redemption and trying yeah. to get your son yeah. back. Yeah. Like this movie again, I've seen the movie done in better movies. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've Wasn't there a Channing Tatum done. boxing movie as well? Um, step up. Yeah, I think that <laughs> was it. Step up. Yeah. I, well, I will say for Sapa, I think technically for the fighting aspect of boxing, it was way better than, way more memorable than Fighter for me personally. It is way better than Annapolis. And okay. I, and I was yeah. in Annapolis. Okay. And even I'm like, no, I, I, it, it, beat, it beats Annapolis. Yeah. I think for the technical, visual, cinematography, and actual physical fighting aspect yeah. of it, I think it was, it's better than a lot of boxing yeah. other yeah. boxing movies. No, I, I think it's going to live on as a, as a TNT weekend, you know, while you're doing other stuff. Yeah. Sure. Watch. Yeah. If it happens to be on while you're flipping the channel, which I don't know if people still flip channels, but so, I, so that's where I feel yeah. that it lives. I don't HBO. feel, I don't feel <laughs> like I would ever choose uh, Netflix to... Yeah watch this yeah i won't i know i won't buy the blu-ray but um well i think we've is there anything else that i may have uh, missed that somebody was itching to really talk about i want to throw it to to my again fabulous panel of hosts here thank you so thank much you. for coming on in. It's marissa it's it's a wonderful to have have a nice female perspective on on a boxing movie so yeah well uh, i do like boxing much. yeah so, it's- so I, yeah so is there anything that, you, that that you wanted to talk about that I that we may not have gotten to? Are we excited I'm about Creed? So excited! Yes. Are we all excited about Creed? Yes. So excited! Yes. Like yeah. Every then time I watch I that trailer, I legitimately freak out. Take it I'm back! So excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, yeah. I, I think I think once Creed comes out. You know, whatever we're talking about, Southpaw may be just forgotten. Is that this year? Is it just getting released? That feels year? like a Christmas release. Yeah. Let me yeah. click. Yeah. So that's later this year. So, um, but, all right. Um, well, if there's, I enjoyed this film. Yeah. Also, just all the work, hard work that everyone put these, in. These are our parting Jake, thoughts. Yeah, no? especially Jake Gyllenhaal and how much research and physical time he put into creating this character. Um, and also, he did go to the Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather fight boxing match back in May a couple months ago yeah. of this year so mm. like he really did so much research and you it definitely showed and that is what I would definitely nominate him an Oscar for so. um, and before we go on you, 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 you brought up something that we didn't talk about where does this fall in uh, do you think within Anton Fuqua's career as a director I mean um, the guy is the guy let's face it the guy's done a few films training yeah. day hello yeah, yeah. Um, so, I I would put it behind, definitely behind Training Day. Yeah. And but it's it's definitely up there though, because th- there are other films that yeah okay for me personally they're okay, but I think Training Day is definitely one of the better. But ones I think of this is a success visual like a not because sometimes in movies to be a success you just have to be a not failure. Yeah, <laughs> like financially speak, like yeah. financially speaking, like even after marketing, they're fifty five million in the hole. Right. They're gonna make that back before DVD sales. Yeah. So, but that allows that allows the director the freedom to do whatever sure. he wants to do I, next. I agree. I think it's a big win for him actually because yeah. it felt like a big movie. It felt like a big movie, and it felt like it worked because big movie, like the bigger the movie, 
you know, the less it's going to be a critical success mm-hmm. in most cases. It's hard for those to both, yeah. you know, parallel on work but on both But what's important tracks. to him is he strikes me as an actor's director as well. <clears throat> oh, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That if they, if an actor didn't know about him or wasn't at, wasn't as attuned to him as a director, they are now. Yeah. Because everyone's and, talking about Jake Gyllenhaal and right. how good a performance yeah. and how good these performances are. And that's a testament to him as a director. And, and let's put this in, into a little bit of perspective, too. I mean, he's coming off of The Equalizer, which is a really huge hit. Uh, probably a little bit more in the budget for mm-hmm. Equalizer. Denzel Washington. You know, I was thinking that Denzel could have played this role. For the, yeah. uh, Forrest Whitaker, you're saying? No. For, for, oh, you for, mean when he was younger? Yeah, you're, you're maybe, yeah. For, I mean, you know, Denzel can, can carry off a lot, but I was thinking, like, you know, he's going from Equalizer to essentially a little bit more of an independent movie, mm-hmm. you know, because it's a smaller yeah. scale movie. Hell, if you can't pay your composer... <laughs> because of budget, let's be sure. real. So, and then his next movie is going to be The Magnificent Seven, yeah. which yeah. I, I'm going to assume has a little bit bigger budget than what, what well, this yeah. did. So, I think for him, this was probably a great chance to do a smaller movie and, and be a little bit, try to be a little bit more creative and get some shots and film boxing. Well, yeah. I, I like the fact that this movie was more family driven a more personal type of relatable yeah. story compared yeah. to his other films where like bigger epic scale mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. deals with like world geopolitics and yeah. world uh-huh. things. I mean if you go like Olympus has fallen and trading yeah. day, oh, like yeah. they're they're big, bigger yeah. scale type Can of I stories. I quickly say I think Olympus has fallen is underrated. I love the Olympus uh, yeah, as well. I, I feel which, like that's like doesn't which get white, it. Which White House destruction movie? No, because that? that always happens. Right? I, I, I genuinely don't remember. It was the good one. Okay, yeah. was White House down not white the good House one? Was not good. Okay, yeah. and I, I think with Anton Fuqua, I mean, he's had a really great career in, in especially the way he manages which movie he picks to do, mm-hmm. because he can do an Olympus has mm-hmm. fallen, and then he can do Southpaw. Yeah. He can do a smaller mm-hmm. movie, and now he's doing Magnificent Seven. He's definitely a director that I always enjoy. Like, oh, when I see his name, I said, oh, okay, it's it's going to look good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, oh, I'm in. Also, $30 million in Pennsylvania under that under those sure. tax credits is yeah. more like... like you get right. you get a lot more for your dollar sure. if you go to yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, well, we'll yeah. go yeah. back to I like you work for the PA. <laughs> I'm, from I'm from I'm from Philadelphia, uh, yeah. and I got I got into the movie business initially because of that tax credit. Come to stuff came to town. <laughs> Annapolis, Annapolis <laughs> actually came to town. If you want to make a thirty million dollar movie, feel we'll, like a sixty. Million. <laughs> we'll, we'll pay you in cheese. Not sticks. so much, you know. Wit whiz. Unless you're in Pittsburgh, I would not pay you whatever Pittsburgh has. I'm a big Philly guy too. Your parting your parting shots. Um, my parting thoughts I think this I think this movie's gonna hold up pretty well okay and it's gonna it's gonna go down as a performance movie with some boxing <laughs> and I'm kind <laughs> of okay with that, that. I'm, I'm okay with like if you really want you can two three four years from now you might kind of forget about this because a lot of movies I like to say get lost in an Oscar shuffle mm-hmm that like there are movies like the, like this that it's ah the movie's okay but Jake Gyllenhaal he might win an Oscar Right. And then some people watch it for that, but sometimes if Jake Gyllenhaal doesn't get nominated for an Oscar, right. the movie kind of disappears for a minute. Right. right. And I think this might be one of those movies, assuming Jake Gyllenhaal doesn't get nominated for an Oscar, which he might. He might. He's on the short list of mm-hmm. 50 actors. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Your, 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 your uh, final thoughts? My, my final thoughts are, if you haven't seen it, I, I'd say go see it. That's that's where mm-hmm. I'm at with it. I'm not, you know, going to say this is going to be the best movie, but I think it's an enjoyable. It's an enjoyable watch, especially if you like sports, and boxing. Yeah, and you know, it, it, I, to me, there's not much outside of seeing this for performance. You know, I mean, the performances were strong. I just wish that they weren't caught up in such a. I, I've been there, seen it in in other movies mm-hmm. better. Uh, I liked your your your. Um, Compared to yeah, this is the thing that's going to be on TNT on a Saturday night or something, and HBO you know, H- for sure. Yeah, well, well, it'll be on the cable outlets and and, and play well. I just wish uh, I don't know. I, I was hoping for more. I wished mm-hmm. for more. Um, you know, I got the performances that I wanted. Mm-hmm. I wanted the I wanted more emotional lift out of this and better plotting. So um, that is it for this episode of Anatomy of a Movie. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, listening, tuning in. Please stay tuned for more Anatomy of Movies. I mean, we still have August. We still have Mission Impossible uh, 5. We've got Vacation. 
a science mm. national lampoon, but just vacation. Mm. We got a bunch of other American Ultra. We got a bunch of movies between now Star and Wars. yeah, and that's the end of the year. I'm just talking like summer. Straight out of Compton, so another movie. Compton. Compton. Another, Compton. another movie I appeared in. So really, I was background. Oh, okay. So NWA. So, so um, yeah. So he was the fifth <laughs> member. <laughs> I was, I knew no it. big deal. I knew no big deal. You can see we're again. Thank you very much, folks. I mean, this yes. is a great panel. Hope you enjoyed it as well. Please comment. Please comment. Let us know what you thought of Southpaw. Am I out of my mind? Is this a much better movie than I think? Do you agree with them? Uh, you know, tell us what you think. We do read these and answer back. Uh, Marissa, where can people find you outside of Popcorn Talk and Anatomy Movie? You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV, and you can follow all of us here at Anatomy Movie on Twitter at Movie Anatomy. Definitely. You guys can follow me at Steve Kaufman. That is K A U F M A N N. And I do a lot of stuff at AfterBuzz TV, and I tweet about it fairly regularly. Awesome. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Matt Ritter one and I will be hosting the AfterBuzz panel for Wet Hot American Summer, which I think we're going to be starting on Monday. Sweet. And you can find me at DMovies1701, and always here at Anatomy of a Movie at the Popcorn Talk Network. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you at the movies uh, next time. Bye. Bye. Let me you. When you're down and they're trying to clown the fuck out of you When you feel like you're running out of fuel I show you how to use Dallas You can burn it to gunpowder From to producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the rest of the Anatomy of a Movie staff, we would like to thank you for listening and subscribing to the show. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email or tweet us. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been Anatomy of a Movie. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.